We're in James chapter 4 tonight as we conclude our series on temptation. And tonight we're in James chapter 4, and we'll be in verses 7 and 8 tonight. But just to recap where we've come from or, or come through in this series, uh, I want to just sort of refresh your memory on that. But uh, we've talked about how temptation is common to all Christians, and we talked about how... Uh, regardless of who the Christian is or how long they've been a Christian or how, how good a Christian they are, if you want to put a label on it, temptation comes to us all. It doesn't matter who we are or what, what kind of life we try to live. Temptation is common to all Christians. We also talked about how temptation is of the devil. We talked about uh, the temptation of Jesus and how Jesus was tempted and how it's not a sin to be tempted, it's a sin to give in to the temptation. And uh, we talked about how uh, temptation comes from Satan. But then on the flip side of that, the next week, we talked about how God does not tempt. God, there is no evil in God. There is nothing about him that would uh, even come close to uh, being uh, something related to temptation or to evil. Uh, and so uh, God does not tempt. And we looked last week at James chapter 1 for that. But tonight we're in James chapter 4. Uh, reading how uh, we can confront and overcome temptation. And so go ahead and read with me there in James chapter 4, and we'll read verses 7 and 8. It says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And so right here, what we see is sort of the, the game plan for confronting and overcoming uh, temptation in our life. Uh, you know, a lot of times we look at the temptations that hit us head on and we think there's just, that's just, that's who I am. I, I just, I've learned not to fight it, so to speak. I've learned not to do, not to try and resist because I'm just, I'm just going to give in regardless of what the, you know, when the temptation hits me. But what we see in this particular uh, set of text from James chapter 4 is that there is a game plan. There is a battle plan for us as Christians to put into place so that we can uh, really overcome the temptation that, that attacks us. For us to be able to confront it and, and really not allow it to change or impact our lives. Now I'm going to read something to you out of the Reader's Digest. And I'm going to read it to you just so I don't mess it up. But uh, this person wrote into the Reader's Digest and said, While my wife and I were shopping at a mall kiosk, a shapely young woman in a short, form-fitting dress strolled by. My eyes followed her. Without looking up from the item she was examining, my wife asked, Was it worth the trouble you're in? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, it would be the answer. But... You know, when we think about it, temptation comes in all shapes and sizes and packages for us. And what it does is, it, it does exactly like that man talked about. It, it draws our attention. It draws us away from where we ought to be focused. And in this case, the man with his wife rather than the uh, young woman that walked by. But we know that temptation is going to do that. We know what temptation is going to try and do to us. That it's going to try and draw us away from God. That it is going to try and sever the, the holiness or the connection, the righteousness that we have uh, with God because of the, the ill effects of temptation. We know that it's going to try and destroy us, basically, and draw us away from God. But the secret for overcoming evil is right there in James chapter 4. It tells us right there in the first four words. It says, therefore, submit to God. Right there, that's our secret. That's the, that's the secret recipe, so to speak, for us to be able to overcome evil, to overcome temptation, is for us to submit to God. When we submit ourselves to God, what we're doing is we're not just simply saying, okay, God, whatever you want for my life, I'm going to do type mentality. Submitting to God means that we are submitting every area of our life, even those areas where we are easily tempted, where we easily cave, those areas of our life, along with everything else, are submitted and given to God. It means that they are basically wrapped in a package and handed to God and said, do with it like you want. Do with it as you would will, God. Whatever your will is, here it is. That means 
uh, our speech, our finances, our attitude towards others, the way we treat others, uh, our service to God, uh, our temptations, every aspect of who we are, neatly bundled up and packaged into a gift with the word submit across the top of it, handed to God, saying, here I am, here is everything about me, do with it as you please. And that includes those areas where we're tempted. And so by us submitting to God and doing what God wants, doing uh, what, God, what pleases God, what we see is that we are drawn closer to Him, sort of like the Scripture talks about. Because as we submit to God, what we're doing is we're resisting Satan. The closer we are to God, the farther away we are from Satan so to speak, as we, would, as we would understand it. And the reason for that is because what's happening is the more we submit to God, the more, the more we see temptation and sin for what it really is. We don't see it as this alluring, nice, golden package, so to speak. We see temptation for the ugliness and the sin that it actually brings into our life. And so when we're submitting to God, on one hand, what we see is we, we gain some perspective from that temptation, and we see it for what it really is. But when we're so focused on the temptation, and we're so drawn into it, and we're so uh, given over to it, what we see is that we can't see anything past the temptation, and so we're so fully involved and in, ensnared by that temptation and by that sin that it all looks good. We can't see anything but it, so to speak. But when we draw close to God, we see that we are able to resist Satan. We're able to stay away from him and uh, see temptation for what it really is. But see, as we draw near to God, as the scripture tells us there, what we see is that not only do we draw near to him, but he draws near to us. Isn't that a great thought when you really think about it? Knowing that we are broken, sinful people that are prone to temptation, uh, and what's the old hymn say? Prone to leave the one I love. Even though we're prone to do that, even though we're prone to go to that temptation, to be drawn towards that sin that is drawing us away, what we see is that even though that's the way that is, we know that when we draw close to God, what that's doing is He's drawing close to us, we're drawing close to Him, and we're sort of pulling closer to each other and through that, we, allow, we have the opportunity to allow God to strengthen us for the struggles with those temptations that we, that we struggle with. Because as God strengthens us, what that does is that helps us to resist those temptations, resist Satan all the better. And the only way for us to do that is when we allow his power to work through us. We can't do it in and of ourselves. We've talked about this through this series. Temptation cannot be beaten by just sheer willpower. Yeah, maybe for a season, but in the end, what we'll see is that without the power of God working in our lives, we will eventually give in to that temptation. We will eventually find ourselves ensnared and in the muck and the mire, fully covered once again. But when we draw close to God, and in turn, he's drawing close to us, we find this renewed strength. We find this spiritual strength that we can't manufacture or manifest on our, on our own. We find this strength that comes only in God. What's Philippians 4.13 tell us? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do that because Christ is the one empowering me to resist that temptation, to resist Satan. And so what we see is that drawing close to God is great because what it does is not only does it draw us closer to him and our relationship with him gets stronger, but what we also see is that because of that, he gives us the strength to resist those temptations. See, you submit to God, uh, as we're talking about here uh, in this particular set of verses, you submit to God when you confess your sins, when you study the Bible, spend time in prayer, when we fellowship with other Christians, and when we uh, as this devotional says, when we use the whole spiritual armor of God, the whole uh, armor of God as we uh, read about in Ephesians chapter 6, when we do all of those things, when we spend time in prayer, when we read the scriptures, when we fellowship and worship with other believers, and when we do all of these things, 
what we see is that we're, we're submitting to God. We're saying, God, this is who I am. I want to, I want to be a, a clean vessel used by you. I want to be, because we confess our sins, I want to be a prepared vessel, so I'm studying your word. Father, I want to be a strong vessel, so I'm spending time in prayer. Father, I want to be one of many vessels, so I'm going to fellowship and worship with other Christians. And, and even this uh, armor, uh, uh, the armor of God that we read about in Ephesians 6, that it means that we are a protected vessel to be used by Him because we're prepared to go out and we have those defenses in place. See, the important thing for us to understand is that confronting and overcoming temptation is not an easy thing. If it were an easy thing, everybody could do it. <laughs> if it was an easy thing, we wouldn't have to have God to do it if temptation could be easily resisted. But what we see is that it takes us drawing close to God, and that comes through time. It's not something that we just pick up one day and be like, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm close to God, and I'm just going to start resisting all temptations. It doesn't work that way. We have to put in the time. Like with any relationship, our relationship with God requires that we put time into it, that we put effort into it, and that we draw close to Him so that He can draw close to us, strengthening us to resist those temptations. See, this submission that we uh, are talking about uh, will impact every area of our life. It will it'll impact every area of our spiritual life. And what this, uh, what this devotional points out is something really good. It says that uh, in the process... The inward man is being renewed day by day. And that's a quote from 2 Corinthians 4.16. Because when we, when we draw close to God and we submit to Him, what we'll see is that every aspect of our spiritual life uh, will be impacted. It should be. As we draw close to Him, He's going to point out the places where we, where we fail Him. He's going to strengthen those places where we fail Him, but He'll also strengthen us and encourage us in those areas of our walk with Him that are already strong. He'll encourage us to, to use those for His glory and to, for the glory of His kingdom. But He'll also help impact every area of our life as we submit to Him. But in what, as that scripture says, that inward man, that the, the spiritual part of us, will be renewed day by day. It's not that we just do a whole lot of Bible reading and spend 30 minutes in prayer and then all of a sudden you know, we're close to God. And we do that once a month and we're good. We'll, you know, and as the effects wear off, we need to do it again. That's not the way it works. What he's saying there is that as we continually make that a habit of who we are and a part of who we are spiritually and physically, we see that our time spent in God's word and in prayer and worship and service and fellowship, all of those things will daily renew us. Has anybody ever had a time where uh, you, you missed your time reading in the Word and you just felt spiritually dry. And then the next time you sat down to read the Scriptures, you're like, you know what? God has just renewed or refreshed me. Well, that's the daily experience that we have when we draw close to God by submitting to Him. And as we do that, our spiritual life is strengthened. And by that, we're drawn close to Him. He's drawn close to us. And we can more easily resist those uh, temptations. And so that's the end of our devotional tonight, and that ends our uh, series on temptation. And so I hope that it's been a, a blessing to you as we've gone through this.